Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Today I am unboxing what in essence amounted to an add-on to the old school tactical volume 2 western front Kickstarter reprint uh, from late mid to late 20, uh, 2020. Uh, this game was kind of an add-on to that and it in it uh, it really what it is it's a it's a mini expansion with additional scenarios focused on a certain front or division or action something. So you'll notice that this one is called Phantom Division. Let me go ahead and pick that up. Phantom Division. And here you can see the logo, Flying Pig Games, OST Pockets, Jamworks Incorporated is Shane Logan's uh, production company. Uh, but this is issued by Flying Pig Games and is, you know, it's, once again, it's a small, it's a smaller box, which is an expansion to the OST system. Now, in order to play this one, I believe you need OST Volume 2. So you can't just buy this one and play it. Uh, but once again, the Phantom Division referred to as, or refers to the 9th Armored uh, Division, and they were involved in several, you know, the Ardennes Offensive. Um, I think they captured the bridge at Remagen. I, I love that movie, by the way, one of my favorites. Um, also, the Ruhr Pocket, uh, they were involved in, in fighting there in Germany near the end. So this expansion, or better yet, Pocket, uh, small box game, focuses on their... Uh, their work. Let's go ahead and flip it over to the back of the box. Very typical. It is the OST system. Big counters, big hexes, well-produced game. And if you know, we enjoy Old School Tactical quite a bit. We've played all three volumes, as well as several of the expansions, Airborne, Stalingrad, and others really have enjoyed them. So this one just is more of a a look at that. So this focuses on that uh, that division, and it, here it says, playing time 45 minutes to four hours, depending on which of the six scenarios that you go ahead and pick. But as is usual, they do a good job with their production. There's a look at the spine. You will notice it says OST Pockets, and it has a big numeral one. So this is the first in... I would hope a planned series of these kind of things as they continue to expand upon that system. This one, once again, was done with a reprint of uh, Volume 2 West Front. So let's go ahead and without further ado, jump into the box. So the first thing that confronts you here is the playbook. This simply uh, holds the scenarios. I mentioned that there are six scenarios. Here you can see all six of them ranging from six turns. They're the first one in Belgium all the way up. It looks like the largest one is the shell begins to crack. Belgium, December 21, 1944 is 13 turns. So that's the one that's going to take you three to four hours. Uh, the others probably play in under, under two hours. So we're going to try to get this one played because you can never have enough old school tactical in your life. Um, and, and here I wanted to, let me, let me point this, whatever you call that, dedic not dedication, but discussion about what this game is. Uh, there you can get a read at that paragraph if you want to pause it. But, you know, it talks about the 9th Armored Division or referred to as the Phantom Division during World War II. Some of their fighting where they fought St. Vit during the Ardennes. Uh, the bridge at Remagen, I already mentioned that, and then the encircled German forces in the Ruhr pocket near the end of the, world, the war in, in 45. Um, so th th these scenarios, just take a quick look at that. I thought that was pretty nice. And then here it mentions you got to have OST Volume 2 to play this game. But here's a look at those scenarios. If you're familiar with the system, you're going to re uh, readily recognize... Um, how those are set up. Here's another thing I wanted to point out. It says the uh, this uses pocket maps. So we're going to show you what those maps are here in just a second. And you can see that sometimes they'll show or, or need two maps and they'll actually tell you in the setup 
uh, how to set those set those up. So here's a look at some of the counters. We'll, we'll go over that sheet. There's only one sheet of counters with maybe 50 counters on it. Uh, it does appear that they have a new weapon there, the M1919A6 light machine gun. I think they've had priests before, but maybe not. These are specific tanks. So there's a look at some of those. But here you'll notice that pocket thing that I was referencing, it's telling you to use map three on top of map two, and that's gonna be the playing area. Um, you know, there's the gut check number. If you know old school tactical, that's, you, you also get impulse points based on a die roll. So you can see here the Germans get 3d6 while the allies only get 1d6 plus five. So you're gonna have a range of six to 11 for the allies and a range of three to 18 for the Germans. That's just the way uh, the system works. That means one side's on the defensive, the other is on the offensive and they have to move about quite a bit more. But here's a look at those different scenarios. Here's one where they use three maps. So that's kind of cool. That one starts to get bigger. That's probably the big scenario. Uh, there's one that just use, uses one map. So that's the playbook, which basically lines out the scenarios uh, for the game. They also throw in the vehicle and unit cards. If you're Once again, if you're familiar with OST, one of the things that I like about it is that all the rules that you need are contained for the individual units are contained in these unit cards. And, and you can see there's five of these are motorized mechanized units and there's only one that's an assault squad. Um, but you're gonna use <clears throat> OST volume two and there's gonna be other unit cards. So there's a look at those unit cards. It gives the different statistics, movement, the defensive values, uh, high explosive firepower, secondary weapons like machine guns, the range. And then here is their uh, range table where you decide whether they hit. Those are typically in the rule books as well, but they do put those here on the, uh, on the unit cards themselves. So there's a look at those six unit cards. Let's go ahead and look, and I just popped a counter out because they're, and these are pre-rounded counters. Always very nice. I enjoy clipping, but there are times where I don't enjoy clipping. Uh, here at the top, you can see that new light machine gun that I mentioned. Also, you can see the assault units for the Americans. Here are some German SS rifle squads, their commanders, uh, sergeant, lieutenant, and captain. Here you have some different markers. And then here's the big stuff, the big boy toys, the armor. Get a look at those. I, I just feel like the armor counters always look really great. There have been times where Alexander and I have just broken out some armor scenarios because it's it's fun, good times. Here's some support units, American leaders. Uh, there's a pack, pack 30, two pack 30s, and then a flak 36 gun. Uh, and then some new, not new, but some terrain that's going to be used. Once again, just one sheet of counters and the rec markers, if you didn't know that they did those on the back, I think that's a very cool touch. Uh, I just think it adds, adds to the look and feel of the game. So I mentioned the maps, Let's go, and these are paper maps, but they are dual sided. So I'm gonna show you one of them here. So that's kind of a non-winter side, summer or spring or, or fall. And then here you have the winter side. So this map, I'm sorry, I had it upside down. So this map number three is obviously going to depict a winter battle. And remember, the, the 9th Armored Division fought uh, in the, the Ardennes at the end of December of 44. So there's a look at two of those maps laid out. Really nice looking maps. They are paper maps. And normally what they do with OST is they do fully mounted map boards. I'm actually okay with these. I like these smaller maps. I just think it's interesting uh, to use smaller maps to give a, a different feel. And it becomes, in my opinion, a little bit uh, more wieldy. You can kind of kind of do things a little bit more. But yeah, a very uh, a very nice small package. Lots of nice content in there to give you six additional scenarios. 
And once again, if you've ever heard us talk about OST, one of the things we enjoy about it so much is these scenarios are all different. They use different units, they use different setups, they use different terrains, um, and they're always interesting. There's always something interesting about them. Um, so there you go, Phantom Division, which is an, the first game in their new OST Pockets uh, series. And this one came out as part of the reprint of OST Volume 2. So thanks to Flying Pig Games, Mark Holt Walker, for sending this to us. We love the OST system. If you're unaware, we have, my gosh, I think we have all three reviews, uh, OST 1, OST 2, and OST 3 on the YouTube channel. Plus, we did an introductory video maybe a year ago on what the OST system is, what you can expect, what kind of rules it has, the overhead, etc. So check that stuff out on the YouTube channel. There's also a lot of written content on our blog. Talking, I have a review of the game in the system, several action points that can give you a better feel. I think OST is one of our favorite top four or five tactical systems. Mine will always be Combat Commander, uh, but I really enjoy OST. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I think the game, the game looks great. I think the package is great. Uh, and I look forward to their focus as they move forward uh, in the future. So I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.